Marx. A single a book on the state, yes, but that does not mean that, um, I mean, uh, this expression that we are throwing away the baby. Well, then we try to take the water and we are throwing away the baby. Well, in this particular case, I don't mind throwing away the baby because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm an expert on Das Kapital and I can tell you that that book is way overrated. <laughs> Way overrated. I mean, I, you know, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about that tonight when we talk about economics. So I don't want to go into it right now. But while while I agree that in the history of ideas, Karl Marx is a giant. That is, if you put him in the historical context of the 19th century, and, and, and you don't you don't you don't question whether he was right or wrong, and you just think about the the conceptual edifice that he built, he's a giant. And he probably has more has had more influence in, on the on the on history than we will ever have. So so let's let's put him you know let's not put him down so easy. But when you start questioning whether his political economy got it right, and I'm going to return to that tonight, you're going to see that he didn't get it right. And because he didn't get it right, and we leftists continue to follow his ideas on <coughs> the 60s and the 70s, and in, and in France they still do. They still have like Trotskyist candidates for presidents and things like that. You start, you start, you know, thinking. Well, maybe it was more like a religion. Maybe it was more like the kind of legitimacy that religion gives to organizations. And so the communist parties around the world, the, the, so their source of legitimacy is not that they can get things done; is that they belong to a tradition. Yes, I agree. But and, and this, we would not want the to whole do that. direction that you can get and the whole influence you can get from these ideas is cancelled. No. Of course, if you meet someone that tells you, yes, I am a rigid no. Marxist, we need to have a Bolshevik party and... Uh, uh, no, the, what we'll do tonight, and you're, you're, you're getting ahead of ourselves, because remember, tonight we're going to talk about economics, so you can raise this point tonight. We will we'll take the good things from Marx, add them to our narrative here, add, add them to our historical explanations, but let's also have the courage of throw away what doesn't work. But right? we'll let's, not, let's not be beholden to the charisma of Marx. As everybody does. Everybody who is a Marxist. The will to change the world is nothing to do with Marxism. Marxism is just a tool in this process. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's just uh, not for our philosophy see, to remain descriptive. The will to change the world that already is a red flag generally. You want to say, what you want to say is the will to change community by community, the will to change organization by organization, the will to change Alliances of organization one at a time, the will to change industrial networks one at a time, the will to change federal government one at a time, not the will to change society, because then you're not saying anything. You're talking about a reified generality and you're making it seem as if it was simple, as if it was just a matter of people having wills. No, it is an issue of implementation, like you said. It's a very hard issue of implementation. And in this issue of implementation, of course, we have to break down the world, change the world into changing all these concrete situations into this is exactly what I'm trying to show you to do so here. Right? We're gonna have to change community by community because sometimes there are conflicts between communities that are just simply because they are neighboring communities and they have disputes over water, sharing water from a river or sharing uh, resources, uh, natural resources and so on. And those conflicts need to be dealt at the level of that community. Then there will be problems about organizations do we keep the, the, the Okrana intact as an espionage agency, or do we just change the name and put it KGB? That's not a solution. That's not a change. You don't, you don't change an organization by changing the name, right? You need to go change the organization. So this is why it's important for me to establish these different things, and I'm running out of time like crazy. Because otherwise, it all seems all too simple. That is the problem with many of the utopian ideologies of the 19th century. They made it seem simpler than it is. And, and this is why it's so important that we don't use labels like libertarianism or anarchism or socialism anymore because they are just brands now. They are labels with, brand, with an incredibly high brand recognition. So if you say, I'm an anarchist, everybody knows what you mean. But they're not helping us in trying to deal with actual problems. Because if we really want to change the world, particularly as individual artists or as individual thinkers, we're going to have to be, start picking things. We're not going to be changing the whole of society, but we could intervene in interpersonal communities and make them better. 
you know, through art or through some other kind of political activity, we can intervene into organizations, schools, as or, individuals, or, that is. Excuse me? As individuals. Well, that's what we are right now, but also it could be as groups. Right? I'm going to shut up with your class. Okay? <laughs> you have to, uh, to Sometimes you need to act as a group because only groups have the resources to carry on something for 10 or 15 years or however long is it going to take. You know, if, if an individual alone tries to change things, maybe he or she gives up after five years and then the things don't get done. But if he belongs to a 10 person group, he bails out, but the other nine persons continue and finish the job over 15 years. So it's case by case without any overall solution. Yes. But uh, clearly, um, this is just, our way of speaking is to simplify. Uh, although you're drawing connections between our way of actually thinking of, of, about the world too. So would you say that uh, our job is to get rid of these simplifications um, through language? Um, through discussing them like this, getting rid of the five generalities by actually uh, breaking these things down like this? Or, I mean, what I'm thinking is, in a way, it gives uh, credit to the whole Kantian uh, view that these, well, these, these words, these simplifications, are having uh, greater power over our thinking than, than they should. Well, no, because, uh, yes and no. I mean, yes, in the sense that we have to use language. And, 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 and linguistic concepts are important. No, in the sense that a Kantian will go immediately for this, whereas a Humean is the one that would start going into this. Because for a Humean, everything is concrete. Right? So a Kantian will never give the, the notion of the state. In fact, Kant wrote a book on the state. Hegel wrote a book on the state. And they, they were not talking about governments as a matter of uh, plurality of organizations, they were talking about the concept of the state. So, once you give up Kant, you give up this. It's just that I cannot assume that you guys will automatically, since, since first of all, since you didn't quite agree with me last night when we were talking about Kant and Hume, <coughs> I cannot take for granted that you are already humans. So I need to continue doing this. On the other hand, what we're doing here, even though we're using words, we're not just using words. What I said, for instance, at the beginning of the class is this. We have evidence that species... I began that with that example, right? That species are born the moment reproductive isolation creates a barrier in their gene pool and die when they become extinct. And because they have a date of birth and a date of death, they are singular individuals. They are historical entities that appear and then disappear, as opposed to general categories. And so I said, well, now that we have evidence, see, it's not just about it, a matter of words. Now that we have evidence that, that this idea, this concept, works in this particular realm, why don't we apply it to other things? Because after all, communities have a history. They, you know, they began as a small, tiny little town with two or three houses, rural village, that eventually became a town, that eventually became a city. You know, they have a history and they can, be, they can go away. Many communities disappear. You know, either they migrate somewhere else, or their birth rate drops between replacement uh, 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 of, you know, they begin having 1.3 kids per person or something like that, and just demographically begin fading out, uh, they have a date of death. The same thing with organizations. Look at all the businesses that are disappearing right now. You know, there's like 25,000 companies have gone bankrupt since the crisis began. So organizations die. Some organizations last longer. The Vatican has lasted for what? over a thousand years, whereas other organizations last, on average, about six months. Restaurants, right? Restaurants open and close. They're like the fruit flies of the organizational world. So we need to think always with, we, we always need to think that there's a plurality of organizations, some of which last very little, restaurants, some of which last very long, ecclesiastical organizations, some of them that last intermediate amounts of time that there's a plurality of communities, that there's a plurality of social justice movements in different, in different, you know, the civil rights movement, the workers' movement, the women's movement, that there are, there's a plurality of industrial networks. We're gonna, I'm not writing anything right now here because I'm going to come back to this 